Bob Lee, if you've not seen my latest work, then you should do so. The American Whore uh, was a very good video. It was for those who are desirous of the truth, it showed you who the greatest whore and the greatest evil in this nation is. And then we did a video before that called Smash and Grab in America, talking about the crime. And both of those are very compelling and very telling. And I urge you to watch both of those. For today, for this teaching, it's a very important how much time is left. You know, there are books, uh, countless books, man, videos, documentaries. There are people that do videos, churches, the greatest hoarder is a church. And so many liars that talk about the end days, last days, you know, last days, prophecy, this, that, how much time is left. And people have been talking about this for thousands of years, how much time is left. So what I want you to do right now is to imagine, and I'm going to help you to understand how much time is left from God, not from somebody's lies and BS, but from God, how much time is left. I want you to imagine that you and maybe your family are at a large sports stadium anywhere in the world, 80 to 140,000 people filled. And I want you to imagine that you and your family are handcuffed to seats in this stadium as a game takes place before you as other people are there with you handcuffed all right now what i want you to imagine is this how long how long will it take if someone were to take an eyedropper yes a small but simple eyedropper that releases one drop of water at a time how long will it take to fill that stadium so imagine someone goes down to the middle of the stadium and they release one drop of water right there in the middle of the field. Now imagine this drop of water doubles in volume every minute. One drop initially, two drops in minute two, four drops in minute three, eight drops in minute four, 16 drops in minute five, 32 drops in minute six, 64 drops in minute seven, 128 drops in minute eight, and so forth and so forth. How long will it take before the stadium is underwater and the people are drowned. Some will say it'll never happen. Some might say years, some might say months. The answer is less than one day. Now I remind you that I told you at the outset, you're handcuffed, all the people are handcuffed. How long is it going to take you to get free and to exit the stadium? Moreover, what does it take to free yourselves from the handcuffs? and be free of what's coming. What does it take for you to free the handcuffs and make it to the exit? Let's say I gave you a gallon of water and I said, here, drink this. You would say, no problem. What if I shoved it up against your face and just forced it down your throat all at once? You might choke and drown. Folks, it's the same amount of water, but it's about the rate of change. You see, Leisurely, you can drink that water in a day, a week, whatever. All at once, it's different. This is what evil is. This is how you start to understand where you're at in the last days when evil is being forced down your throat. Do you understand? Evil is pouring out evil as fast as God will allow, and people are going to choke and drown without God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. As sure as you are listening to this, it's going to happen and far faster than what most people understand. I propose this, I added scenario to you at the stadium. What if you're sitting with your spouse, your parents, and even your children? What if you took your pet to the game? Would you be willing to leave them behind and make it to the exit by yourself. Would you? You see, we fully start to understand why Jesus said we must love him more than our own family. Matthew 10, 37, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see, friends, this is how deep and powerful the words of Jesus Christ are. It destroys any notions of anyone or anything being on equal footing with the Son of God, who is Jesus Christ. You see, it destroys it. You know, Jesus told us that we don't know the time when the Almighty Father will say, that's it. 
Jesus says he does not even know. Only the Father knows us. Not the angels in heaven, he says, not himself. Only the Father knows, but we are told we can use discernment. And where do you get discernment? Prayer and the Holy Spirit that lives in you. You see, we can tell the weather. We can tell the temperature without knowing exactly what it's going to be. We can have an idea. Well, we can have an idea now, a really good idea, that the stadium is spilling and it's spilling rapidly. And the people are oblivious to what is going on. In fact, many people like it. They are enthralled with this world and all the pleasures thereof. You see, they like the game that they see. They sit in the stadium and they like the game. They like it. They don't want to exit. Jesus says we can do all things through him. All things through him. Jesus also says in John 10, 29, that our father will not lose one of his children, for our father is greater than all. Now, as we remove our handcuffs and exit the stadium, let's remember to do a couple of things. Number one, let us give the glory, thanks, and praise to our Father in the name of Jesus always. For without your Father, you don't escape the handcuffs and you don't make it to the exit. Let's call it the way it is. Without God, we get to sit right there with Him. All right? Secondly, Let's not do what people always want to do when God is good to them. They want to, well, I want to save so-and-so. You don't have that power, man. You can't save anybody. You don't have that power, so stop it with, you want to help this person. You see, as many people are, are going to exit with Jesus, they're going to want to stop and look at other people and say, maybe I can help them. The answer is no. You see, you start to understand the story of Noah a little bit better. People were warned. People were told. God gave a warning. This is what's going to happen. And what do people want? The desires and the filth of this world. So as you're making your way to the exits, all right, let's not stop and have conversation with people that are not like us. You see, the water that is emanating from this dropper, drop by drop, that grows in volume each time, is symbolic for filth sin, lust, lies, murder, rape, theft, and most importantly, underline this now, the hatred, mockery, and denial of God the Father and His image in Jesus Christ. I did a video a couple months ago, and I told you that on The Simpsons 10 years ago, they actually did a show of Bart Simpson lean, leaning over the nativity scene and shooting Jesus Christ and saying, die, die, die. You know, for a lot of folks, that would have been a telltale sign of, man, we're in the last minute. Let alone the last day. We're in the last minute. Very soon, the water is going to engulf all that are anti-Jesus. Now, you remove your handcuffs, raise your eyes to heaven, call out to Jesus, and make your way to the exit. Do not stop to look or talk. Moreover, as you walk to the exit, you keep saying this, three words, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.